1979, English jazz rockers Brand X released their fourth studio album, Product, and from it, the Phil Collins composition, and so to F. <laughs> Okay, searing uh, open cadence lead taken by uh, John Goodsoul on guitar and uh, got that very uh, misty, cymbal-laden um, intro, like evocative of um, Los Sindos to a certain degree. Yeah, just kind of like those booming opening notes, uh, like like kicking off each figure of eight. Our first roll in the track. And, and so the F, we, we haven't heard F yet, but we're going to get there. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a pretty lengthy climb to get to F. We've mostly been, duh, we've mostly been hearing like D and uh, F sharp minor. Yeah. Uh, marimbas, yeah, and those, um, I guess, uh, Phil Collins, uh, giving us some rare talent in that department. Yeah, something he didn't, uh, come to think of it, I uh, wish he had done that a bit more often. Oh, no, wait a minute, I, that's probably, uh, uh, Morris Pert, come to think of it. Although it's not unheard of for virtuoso drummers to um, also do um, mallets from time to time. I think um, Alan White on Tales from Topographic Oceans or the track changes or um, Bill Bruford when he got um, his own namesake band together. Yeah, some of the tracks on the, on the, first, on the first couple of albums. <laughs> Now we've got a really tricky drum pattern coming in here and just kind of like disrupting the bars, sort of. Looks like that bum 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 that, that he keeps throwing into the, the second uh, four count in each figure of eight. Actually, just take apart like the, the, the bass, the guitar, and the drum. It's also like e each of them are almost playing like a different track, uh, a, a different track that, that just kind of mel melded into one. Yeah, the guitar is just playing these open cadence, searing lyrical notes, just, you know, held over, over the bars. The bass and the drum seem to have a somewhat similar cadence. They're both kind of jerky, yet there are some notes where like 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 the bass is holding and and then um, before running again while while and then and then it, it, it seemed moments like that seem to be traded between the two. It's something that do 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 right right there is just so Right there. Oh, and now John Goodsoul is really starting to run. And while all this complexity is going on, uh, there's still that overriding melody that's holding us together. That the the um, the marimba is carrying the theme. Okay, 
I, I'm going to declare it already. I, I, I've known this for a long time, but, uh, but uh, okay. The greatest, Phil Collins' greatest um, achievement as a composer, this track. <laughs> because it's so like epic and complex and And now we're going into those power chords. They're taking us to a new chord that we haven't heard yet. C, D. We all oh, okay, we went two chords we hadn't heard yet. B B flat. Um D C Yeah, he doesn't play bar chords too often, but here. Another thing I really love about this album is that they show uh, their uh, ability to both kind of like rock and play jazz, um, more so than, than any of the previous albums. Like there, there are a few um, kind of a straight up like AOR uh, rock vocal tracks, and, and they, they, they nail that just as well as they do the other styles. And then there are some that, that stray outside of um, jazz rock, like into kind of like bossa nova, Brazilian type uh, fusion, like the track um, Resus uh, Perplexus, yeah. Okay, now we're, now we're in this like open cadence C section, and uh, the bass is getting a lot more throbbing, a lot more trebly. Of chanting going on in the background, da, 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 like that. And now uh, Phil Collins, of course, is spraying with cymbals and to give it that kind of like misty full sound and doing like rolls, you know, or or uh, yeah. Actually, at this point, Morris Pert is probably uh, doubling up and helping him now that I'm not hearing that, that marimba that anymore. Okay, uh, guess where we are now? We're in F. Yeah, we finally arrived. Oh, hear that 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 luminous synth, uh, those sustain notes. Uh... These two epic chords are about to get more epic. They're going to throw in a third chord. And now John Goodsoul is trying to like like fight against it. He's give, he's he's throwing in some like a uh, searing like sustained leads like like one notes and in in in, the, in in between the power chords. <laughs> chanting anything in particular if it's just dead dead da, da, like that <laughs> That's what I was thinking of, actually. Yeah, they, they've taken the, the, the same uh, cadence of that of that power riff that, and they they've moved it around. Now it's like now it's like three chords. Oh, 
appreciate the um, accents that um, Morris Pert is, or, or that uh, Percy Jones is placing underneath the chords. Doom, 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 like. <laughs> Oh, here uh, John Goodsoul just like uh, scale away. Oh, those crashing notes, those held notes, those. And so to F by Brand X. Yes, their 1979 fourth release um, came out in, on Charisma in the UK and Passport in the US. And um, the two versions have different sequencing. And so to F is the last track on side one on in the UK version. But on the, the copy I always had, it uh, was the penultimate track on side two, and, and I like that sequencing much better because, and so to F is just not complete without this as its post -lead. April. These just have to go together. Okay, and this has got to be, the, the, this, tra this track is credited to uh, Giblin, and, um, oh well, and yeah, uh, John, uh, Percy Jones doesn't play bass on the entire thing, John uh, Giblin plays bass on this track, and, and he wrote it, yeah, it's his baby. <laughs> Oh, I just love that smooth, uh, fretless bass sound amid the uh, kind of found sounds of the bat atmosphere. Birds and ocean waves. Although, actually, I get kind of more of an autumn-y feel from, from this sound. April is like a pretty title. I, I would think more, I don't know, I, I'm thinking, I'm feeling more like October or something. And April was given a lengthier uh, rendition that appeared on the album Is There Anything About, which the mini album that came out in 1982. Um, yeah, I, it's claimed that that product, this, the product sessions um, were also yielded the album Do They Hurt, which came out the following year. I do believe that. I, I That's plausible. And uh, let's just put it this way. Do They Hurt and product sound as though they could have come from the same sessions? Uh, with product being the cherry picked track list and and do they hurt being kind of the leftovers um, and uh, but is there anything about which came out a full three years after product 
has more of an 80s sound in my ears. I, they, they must have gone back in and, and if, if, if those tracks were from the same 79 sessions, they must have been retouched somewhat, a bit of overdubbing put on, remixed. Um, yeah, it's, it, some of those tracks on there are like, like Ipanema. It's hard, hard for me to imagine uh, recorded in 1979. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, Brandex, uh, Two tracks that should always be together, so if you were a proud owner of the U.S. Passport issue of the album, then you're used to hearing it right. And, um, yeah, on, on the U.K. version, it follows um, Not Good Enough, See Me. Yeah, which on... Um, which is, of course, the, uh, the final track on side... One, yeah, that that's another great track. More of a jerky track with some with with lots of bass on it, lots of uh, lots of real rapid fire bass licks and such. Um, yeah, that that that's a real like Percy Jones dominated track. Yeah, yeah. I sometimes I I I sometimes forget that there was another bassist in Brand X besides like because the first the the, the first the. the the first two people I think of whenever I think of Brand X, even before I think of Phil Collins, I think of Percy Jones, and I think of John Goodsall, yeah. And then I think of Phil Collins, because um, he, he had to, of course, he could only be involved from time to time. Like, he, he was returning to the fold for some of these tracks um, after um, he was unable to take part in the third album, Masks, because Genesis got really, really busy around that period. And, of course, 79 uh, Genesis were between albums. Um... Another uh, interesting thing about this album, it has like one of the first uses of a certain kind of drum machine. Let's see, the, the track Wall to Wall, I played that on radio once too, like 20 years ago, is the first recorded song in which Phil Collins used a rolling drum machine. Um, and he would also use it on Duchess the following year, which came out on uh, their 1980 album, Duke. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, uh, <clears throat> and I'll say it once again. Um, and so to F, uh, credited exclusively as a Phil Collins composition, his greatest achievement as a composer. Yeah, because he hadn't written anything by himself yet for Genesis. That no, he had he had co-written some things, and um, but um, this uh, and, and he would he would have some solo. They they would get a bit more uh, cre uh, like. Crediting, they would they would break away from the whole Genesis tradition of, of crediting everything as a group uh, in the eighties. But um, yeah, to to think that that he uh, achieved one of his most complex and epic, uh, you know, compositions just two years before the release of Face Value, which though a varied album, um, very very diverse, very uh, across the musical spectrum, uh, track by track anyway, was the album that would uh, reveal a whole different Phil Collins to the world at large. And this, at this point in 79 though, no one, hardly anyone even knew who that person was. For more rubies and sapphires from the catalog of Brand X, see the directory of albums by English B artists linked in the description below. Uh, for Red Hot Tracks and Purples from the entire uh, Brand X catalog from 1976 to 1982, or 1976 to 79, if we're really to believe that everything, that all the last material from that original run was produced in these same sessions. Yeah. Like and subscribe, follow me on social media, share the video, and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the epic two-parter that we just heard. Um, and so to F and the postlude April. Yeah. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear-traveled trimaximist, signing off.